The Link Show is just about to start. If you want to be a part of The Link Show, head over to linkkids.com.au forward slash live. Today on The Link Show, we are continuing our series, My Way or God's Way. We've got another challenge with, is it from the Bible or is it from the movie? We're both five, four, five. Mm, tired. And we'll be reading your shout outs, all that and more. Let's, Let's get linked. Welcome back where we love linking in with you and we love learning about how much God loves us. And and I got another joke, right? No. So you know last week we did a joke? No. This week, listen, right? No. Why do soccer teams spin around in circles? Because they want to win the World Cup. Oh that was pretty decent, right? <laughs> that was pretty decent. Come Link on, guys. crew, you've Come got on. to do better. Please send in some funnier jokes. Buckle's <laughs> going to read your shout outs. Hey, Link crew, Buckle here, and I'm reading the shout outs, but I'm actually reading them from here in Everyday Church with Everyday Kids in Perth. And Miguel, that joke was awful. So, we've got some funny jokes here. Okay, first joke is from Ruth, and the joke goes like this uh, How many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? Tentacles, because they've got tentacles, it's ten. It's better. Okay, second joke comes from Tiffany and it's this. What time of day is a dog's favorite part? It's the afternoon. That's definitely better than Miguel's. And the last joke is from Abigail. She says, why is the potato scared of Friday? Because it's Friday. The potato's gonna get fried. So if you've got a good joke, send it through in the shout outs. We're gonna keep reading those next week. But hey, let's go check out Preach Part One. Hey Link Crew, Buckle here, and I have flown all the way from Queensland on the Gold Coast over here to Perth in Western Australia because I'm here hanging out with all of the kids from Everyday Church. We're gonna be having a heap of fun. The kids team are in the room behind getting it all set up. The kids are gonna be arriving very soon. We've got stickers, we're gonna be handing out, we're gonna be telling some jokes, making Miguel laugh. It's gonna be a heap of fun. But what I want to talk about right now is actually today's point. It's kindness. You see, we talk about kindness a fair bit on The Link Show because it's something that I felt for this year, 2023, was something really important that we needed to address a couple of times to make sure that we remembered. And so today I specifically want to talk about what does it mean to be kind, not just to your friends. Because I mean, being kind to your friends is pretty easy, right? If you're not fighting and everything's going well, kindness to your friends is just natural. It's just a part of being a friend. But what does it mean to show kindness to someone that maybe isn't your friend or is someone that is actively against you? What about showing kindness to someone that people say they're your enemy? So you might not even know them. You've maybe never met them, but other people tell you, oh, you don't want to be kind to that person. He, that person is your enemy. What does that mean? See, I remember when I, I moved schools, I've told stories a few times about, we traveled around a little bit when uh, my dad got a new job. And so we actually lived in two different cities in the process of moving. And I remember at one point we got to this new area and we, I started making some friends. And one of the kids in my friend group said to me, oh, that kid over there, we don't hang out with them. They're not a nice person. They're weird, they're strange. Just stay away from that person. And so initially, because I was trying to fit in and I wanted to have friends, I just did what they said. I didn't talk to that person. If I saw them walking around, I would avoid them. You know, they seemed a little bit weird. And that's what everyone would tell me. That person's weird. And so that's what I did. And so month went past, two months went past, three months went past. And like, we're in the same class and I knew their name and I knew a little bit about them just from in the classroom. But in lunch breaks and soccer and hanging out, we all avoided this person until one day, we did a group assignment. And so the teacher put everybody in groups. And lo and behold, the teacher said, Buckle, you're with this person. And instantly in the back of my mind, oh, what? I, oh, the, the weird kid? Really? The weird kid? Why do I have to be with the weird kid? And so I did the right thing and we sat together and I started asking questions and we started planning the assignment that we had to do together. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm just gonna like just get this done. I'm just gonna keep the answers really short so we can just come up with what we're doing and we'll, I'll leave them alone and we'll just do different things. But as we started talking, I realized something. The kid wasn't weird at all. He was actually really, really cool and really, really smart and just told the funniest jokes and we hit it off straight away. And so that entire day, first break, second break, even after school waiting for the bus, we were just chatting and hanging out. And I remember getting home that day and just feeling so guilty that I was like, wait, that kid is amazing. I want that, that kid to be my friend forever. 
I can't believe I listened to other people and didn't show kindness instead of doing what I read in my Bible where God says show kindness to others, to everyone. It doesn't matter whether they're kind to you, not kind to you, if you think they're nice or weird or whatever it is, we're kind. We show kindness irrespective of who that person is. You see, showing kindness, it's the attitude of our heart. And so I was able to show kindness and then bring this kid into a community because I put down barriers. I put down those walls of what other people said and I did what I knew God wanted me to do. And so a little later on, I'm actually gonna talk about a story in the Bible where there's a lady in a similar situation. She's actually one of the people in the promised land, but she's not an Israelite. So in her mind, the people that are coming, they're my enemy but she chooses a different approach. And so we're gonna see how that changes her life and we're gonna see what we can learn from that as well. But we'll talk about that in just a minute. All right, welcome back to another challenge of is it from the Bible or is it from the movie? We've got a piece of paper. Don't forget, you can play along at home. If you think it's from the Bible, do this. And if you think it's from the movie, do this. Your teachers and leaders will be watching you. So be truthful, but let's get it. Lockie, let's go. what is our first question? I'm ready. All right, guys, so the first quote is, a cheerful heart is good medicine. Bible or movie? Oh, I feel like you're gonna get this wrong. Cheerful. There's one wrong. No, I think I've got this, because we love being cheerful. Hold it down, Miguel, I don't oh. wanna see it. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Three, two, one. You are both correct. Hey. Ooh, yeah. yeah! Hey, that's it. Awesome. We know our Bible. We know our Bible. Some people are worth melting for. Bible. Oh, that's not in the Bible, bro. That can't be. No, I, I, Cece, I, I, that might be in Cece's Bible. I, I, <laughs> that is my Bible. I recognize it from a movie. I just can't remember the movie. All oh. right, Lucky. Three, two, one. I said it was from a movie. I'm so sorry. Right, extra points from Frozen. If you can guess. Oh, Frozen. Oh, sorry, sorry, guys. Wow. For the next couple, if you can guess what movie or what Bible book the quotes are from, you'll get an extra point. Get yeah. it. Let's okay. go. Let's go. Next quote. There's no one I'd rather be than me. Oh, okay. Okay, Cece, what do you reckon it is? Oh, look, I, I recognize it, but I don't know where can, from. Can you let me know if it's a Bible or a movie? I can't, that's not the point. Oh, I tried. Okay, but, you ready? Yeah. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. You're both correct. Where was it from? Ooh. Nobody's gonna guess. Um, wait, so what was the thing again? There's what no was... one I'd rather be but me. That sounds like it's a Disney movie. It's Disney for sure. It is a Disney movie. Oh! No one I'd rather be but me. No one I'd rather be but me. Not in Canto. Five, four, oh, three, uh, two, Coco. one. No, it's Wreck-It Ralph. Oh! oh! I'm gonna wreck it! <laughs> there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Oh! Yep. Yeah, I know that one. Yeah. All right, you both got it? Yep. Yeah. Three, two, one. Bible, you guys are correct. It's, uh, it's my phone Romans. case, guys. That's, That's how cheating. I know it. That's actually cheating. No, it doesn't have the Bible verse. Just no fear and love. But, uh, That's got to be still cheating. the Bible do you think it's from? Romans. Corinthians. You are both wrong. I'll give you 10 seconds to quickly guess. Am I? No. Galatians. No, it's not. No. John. Ephesians. It's in John. It's John. Yeah. John! That's it, let's go. Well, it's actually one funny. John, but I'll give it to you. Oh, oh yeah. No. Okay. John is John. John, John is John. Is John is John. Wrong is wrong. Last, last quote. My boss last is gonna be quote. proud. Do not be afraid, I'm with you. Yeah, we got, yeah, it. got it. We got it. Oh, you already got it? Yeah. yeah. Three, two, one. You're both correct. I was about yeah. to say, your face was not telling me that I was correct. That's like, I feel like, and you know what, I'm not even gonna guess I'm... What is in? Because like it's in like every book of the Bible. It's in the Gospels. I'm gonna say Matthew though. Yeah, well, I'm gonna say Luke. They're both wrong. John. Is it Mark? Isaiah. Nah. Well, look. Old Testament. Let's bro. be let's be completely honest. That statement has it's been the said theme to of the Bible. Has been said to every single character in the Bible. Fine, you both get a point. Yes. Woo! All right. I now I got a question, Lockie. Yeah. I got a question. Did I technically win this round because I got the book right, meaning I got an extra point? Technically, Tech you did win. Say less, no! don't need to say any more. Like I said, that, like I said, yeah, yeah, I've okay. got this in the bag. It's like time I to said. go watch the Bible like story. Say hello to Joshua, one of the heroes of the Bible. And right now, he has just become the leader of the Israelite people. Before this, Moses was leading and had rescued the people from Egypt and they'd been wandering around the wilderness for 40 years. But the time had come for God to take them into the promised land. 
God spoke to Joshua and said, Don't be afraid. Be strong and courageous because I will be with you. So Joshua prepared and got two men to sneak into the land to spy it out. He told them to spy all around the land and to look in the city of Jericho. So off the men went. When they arrived at Jericho, they hid in a house of a lady named Rahab. Now, Rahab was not an Israelite, and she had made bad choices, but she welcomed the men in to hide in her home. But word soon reached the king that there were spies in the city. He sent his guards to Rahab's house to get the men and bring them to him. But when the guards arrived, she hid the spies on the roof under some sticks and told the guards, yes, the men were here, but they've already left. Hurry, you might be able to catch them. So the guards left. She went up to see the two spies and said, Surely your God has given you this city. We've heard of the amazing things that he has done for your people. Surely your God is the one true God. When you come to take the city, please show kindness to me and my family. And so the spies agreed. Rahab got a rope and helped the men out through a window outside the city. And as they were leaving, they called out to her and said, tie a red rope out of your window. And when the time comes for us to take the city, we will remember our promise to you and we will show kindness to you and your family. Even though Rahab had made bad choices in her life, because she put her trust in God, God saved her and her entire family. The thing I love about this story is the Israelites are coming into the promised land. God's got a plan. We learned last week that the 12 spies went in, 10 of them gave a bad report, only two gave a good report, and all the Israelites listened to the bad report. And so because of that, they didn't get to go into the promised land. That whole generation wandered around the wilderness for 40 years. But finally, it's a change of generation. It's a new group of leaders. Joshua is now leading, and they're coming into the promised land. And he sends these two spies in. And this lady Rahab has a choice. She sees that these two are her enemy. And so she could go to the king and be like, King, I've hidden the two spies in my house. Come now, come and capture them. And I guarantee you, if she did that, the king would have given her rewards of gold or silver or a nice house and as a renown throughout the city. She would have been the city's hero for capturing the enemy's spies. But she realized something. These people, although everyone around her was saying they're our enemy, she realized, no, no, these are God's people. These are the people I'm meant to show kindness to. And so she does the right thing. And then the rest of the city, as they try to hurt the Israelites, because of her kindness, not only is she saved, but her whole family is saved as well. You see, when I showed kindness to that kid who everyone else called weird, I don't know what change it could have made in his life, but I do know that the way he acted at school changed. He no longer felt alone, but he felt included. I potentially saved him from a really awful schooling experience and gave him a fantastic schooling experience. You see, you don't know what your kindness will do in somebody else's life, not just yours. Just by taking that first step of saying, you know what, I don't care what other people say about you, I'm gonna give you a chance for myself. Now, like I said earlier, if it's someone that's actively trying to hurt you, get away from that, run away. You don't have to put yourself in harm's way. But kindness is different. It's the attitude of our heart. How do you treat the people in your world, whether they are mean to you or nice to you? I remember when the bullies at school would start to call me mean names. I literally would just ignore them and just say, thank you, and just move on. And they couldn't fathom, like I wasn't getting upset. I wasn't crying. Why isn't he getting upset? I would just be like, thank you. And I would just move on. I refused to react with meanness to their meanness. I chose to be a person that people would see as kind. And so what sort of person do you want to be? When people talk about you and your name, are you known as the person that retaliates and fights and get up, gets upset and is mean to people? Or are you just seen as the thank you person, the person that no matter what, always shows kindness? I know the sort of person I want to be, and I can't wait to hear about the sort of person you want to be as well. Remember, always show kindness. We had so much fun today. We hope you guys had fun as well. I can't believe, well, I mean, I can. I won the game. Yeah. It's just standard. By one point, man. A win's a win. Isn't that what they say? All right, if you want to watch Miguel <laughs> win by one point, don't forget to head on over to our YouTube channel. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe. But we'll see you next time. I'm Miguel. I'm Cece. And we'll see you on The, the Link, Link Show. Show.
Bye. See you later, everyone.